even get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. Ah, slept late. Slept, slept at 6, 6.30, 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> My wife was asking me, okay, we'll go for morning market shopping. I said, I didn't sleep. She said, you didn't sleep. Yeah. This is what happens when you drink uh, espresso, you know. Uh, uh, the, I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you why I slept late. The, you know, the, the landscape of competition is changing so much that uh, it's, it's, it's scary. It is very, very scary. Where uh, before my clients used to include, you know, middle class, uh, no, sorry, what, mid age, uh, like 30, 40 year olds. Predominantly 30 to 50 year olds, okay, that range. That's where my maximum range uh, of clients are. And uh, mostly men, okay. But lately it has, you know, it started, uh, it started actually moving to students. Uh, my first big student was actually from Harvard Business School. At first, I thought that guy was pulling my leg. I was like, yeah, you're from Harvard. I'm from the Obama administration. <laughs> Until he proved it that he was from Harvard. I was like, what the fuck eh, would a guy from Harvard want from me? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm a school dropout. I, I told him, see, listen, you're from, you're actually from Harvard. Like, uh, I hope, uh, I hope you're aware that, uh, you know, who I am and what. He's saying, I know everything. I've been following you for two years. So, uh, I, I kept quiet because, you know, business is business. And then, uh, well, to my surprise, he was asking me about uh, personal branding and all that. Uh, I was happy to oblige. Uh, my surprise came when he came back as a return customer. And he had some problems with regards to relationships and all that. And then he approached me the third time. So three times he got in touch with me. And, uh, you know, I, for me, it was a shock because when you, you know, when you say Harvard Business School, you're talking of the creme de la creme, you know, it's like uh, the first time, you know, even though I've been public speaking for so many years, when I went and spoke in front of CEOs and uh, all the billionaires and all the rich guys, when I spoke to them the first time, I bombed. I really fucking bombed. I, I gave a terrible presentation. It was embarrassing. I was really upset with myself. Until the guy who had invited me asked me, what the fuck happened? Like, why did you, you know, why did you bomb or why, why were you not up to the mark? I uh, I kept quiet and then I told him, I guess I was overwhelmed with the presence of CEOs and all that. And you know, I'll, I'll tell you, he, he's a local Emirati. Huh? We we're sitting around the table. Uh, this was at World Trade Center. The topmost, uh, this thing, uh, not a topmost, it was high. Uh, you cannot enter without a special pass and permission. So he said, Loy, right now, we are all seated, seated on this table here, all of us. He's saying there is, we are all eating food. We are all talking like men. There is nobody here who is flashing his wealth, his money, his position. We are talking like human beings. He's saying, there's no difference between you and us. The only difference being is when we go to the office, and when we put on the hat of the, you know, 
the the role that we have taken the social responsibility the corporate responsibility that we have otherwise here we are men he is as equal to me as i am equal to him and you are also equal to us he saying so what is there is all in your head and he was absolutely right you know uh, i was upset at the time and um, you know i just kept quiet and you know there were these 50 60 year old guys they were talking to me and they saying hey you, should, you need to take it easy man hi doggy come over so long yeah 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 after very long he's come because he never comes so he said uh, it's all in your head so yeah that was the first time i got like you know ceos but after that i have always you know your ceo you're a director you're a shake you're anything yes i will have the respect for your position for what you have earned for what you have accomplished but i always kept it in my head he and i there are no difference when we both die we both go 6 feet down underground you know so i have never lost my confidence but then when i got this student from harvard business school it's not like every day you get from harvard business school harvard business is like you know yeah because come on you tell anybody in this world listen i got a client from harvard business school <laughs> india you know from india the guys are like, अरे तेरी औका देखिए क्या चूतिया गिरी क्या लाइक यू नो इन बॉम्बे जैसे पतंग उड़ा रहे हैं मीन्स इज फ्लाइंग अ काइट यू नो ओ देख कितना ऊपर गया सो यू नो इट्स इट रियली रियली ओपन माय आईज टू रिस्पेक्ट माय वर्क इवन मोर इज लाइक फक आई आई डू गिव समथिंग ऑफ वैल्यू हाउ कम आई डोंट बिलीव इट then you know by the time he had second and third time and he spoke to me i told him see listen uh, can i ask you something right off the bat he said yeah i said you are from harvard business school so you know i am a school dropout you are from a rich family i come from like i mean uh, i i told him i i was absolutely surprised when Uh, you approached me and i didn't believe you're from harvard business school and all that see he told me uh, you know see if you see the campus it's, it's pretty normal everything is you know we are all talking to each other like normal you know even when we go out we don't go around flashing our harvard business school and all that and uh, he said we are so busy we don't get time for anything else Saying and uh, we are just focused about our careers. We are not going around to brag. I am from Harvard Business School. A very grounded guy, and he said, uh, "People tend to have this. Oh, he is from Harvard Business School, but we don't look at it like that because we are busy looking at people above us." And uh, he saying, "I came to you because you offer value in certain areas where I can learn. You may not be good at what I am good at or what I'll, you know, everything that I want." the certain areas so for me it was like oh so I was telling you the, you know the guy from harvard business school he got in touch two three times i have had from big universities really big ones like the ivy league uh maybe four four max in all these years four okay which is a good score so for before i die this is like wow harvard business school i even got a donation from a harvard professor really he sent a donation to me and how did i know that he was actually from harvard the email i still have that email it's like um, i sh- i shared it with people who are close to me it was a matter of pride and he said i like your content so so, <laughs> so that was a matter of pride for me but uh, the 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 point i was trying to share with you is yeah so these youngsters have been approaching me but now lot more youngsters are coming to me and it really makes you like wow you know this generation that is there actually is competitive they want to you know they want to know what is branding personal branding they want to improve on communication they want to develop new skills man my days when i was in my 20s i just wanted to play games and chase girls 
these this new generation of youngsters they ask you questions how can i be a freelancer how can i be an entrepreneur they are using social media for business i appreciate the fact that they are at least trying rather than just playing around oh okay fine it's not everyone but the ones who are there are extremely competitive very smart and very sharp by the way one one boy on my facebook it it really blew my mind off he's 13 or 14 he is like a tony robbins kind of coach he made friends with me he became friends with me the boy is thai huh? and he speaks fluently in english and he is you know he just speaks you can achieve anything you should believe in yourself uh, go out get your dreams and this and that and he's like a coach and he calls himself a coach i was like fuck look at that you know and he i i think he has done small time seminars and all that he's busy trying to sell his skills and market i mean i uh, you'll be surprised to know i i even had uh, my canadian client a client from canada i can't give you the details this guy was literally making 11000 11000 Canadian dollars per day just let that sink in 11000 Canadian dollars per day and he's hardly in his 20s uh, obviously your question will be what has he done he has invested in cryptos he has invested in real estate he has apartments and you know and um, you know like when he told me uh, what i'm earning 11000 Canadian dollars i thought 11000 Canadian dollars per month i was like oh okay 11000 what do you want you say i'm looking at 50000 i said 11000 to 50000 takes a lot of effort he said yeah i know i know i'm prepared that's i've come to you so i like a fool i was thinking he said 11000 Canadian dollars per month i said see listen you need to break it down uh, per month you need to break it down per week and per day and per hour and all that he said no 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 i think you misunderstood it's not 11000 canadian dollars per month it's per day i was like are you fucking shitting me guys i like where 11000 canadian dollars per day i really thought he was bluffing you know because you get all these guys they give bullshit and stories and all that and eventually he, he proved it i was like fuck so yeah so there are competitive people like this man and really makes you think you know it it opens up the the possibility that how much you can earn how much you can make what kind of competition is there when you get out of the four walls of your house what a world is there outside which you never thought possible you know and these guys who are rich and successful they don't go on bragging on social media putting up oh take this course i made seven figure income take my course for 37 dollar 97 dollar sign up for the email they don't do all that bullshit and you'll be surprised to know they don't even keep a facebook profile or they keep it hidden even if they have they don't share it because they value their privacy so much many of these successful guys they just don't have a social media presence they just don't they might have a website that is for business or networking or whatever but they do not have a social media presence and even if they do they keep it hidden so for me it has been like a learning experience i would say that was the most powerful moment of my life this Harvard Business School guy and uh, yeah <laughs> if you're interested to know what were some of the most crazy clients i received maybe i'll give you a list and i trust me when i say this you will not believe me if i tell you the types of clients i if you're interested put the comments down below and uh, let me know if you're interested i'll give you the five most shocking clients that i ever got shocking you'll think uh, like they say in hindi no yeah, is flying a kite <laughs> but uh, i know how 
See, if I have to bullshit, uh, it's, it's not going to benefit me in any way. Maybe I'll get some 20, 30, 100 views. But uh, I'm telling you, I, I did get. Although I do wish that these clients had given me more money, but that's a different thing altogether. But getting powerful people like that is like... So anyway, wanted to share this with you. Let me know your thoughts down below. This is me signing off. You guys take care. what you're thinking you can get a job in the middle east simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke remember that competition is everywhere some here some there but bam loy macito is the best mm -hmm.